Okay, so these support ribs now need to be taken apart, put epoxy or some sort of waterproofing in there, put back together and allowed to cure. We have some wood glue, but this is gonna be for structural integrity. So we're trying to reinforce this joint. And so we need to use some epoxy on the screws in between to make a really strong unit here. So if the screws fail, the glue, the glue will hold. If the glue fails, the screws will hold. So you got some redundancy built in for safety purposes. need to take it all the way out but just enough to really about like that you know see that's you can move that up epoxy to coat these joints. Now I should uh, add some wood flour, but I don't have time. It's already setting off on me. So I made sure we drip a good bit of epoxy down into these screw holes and coating that whole joint so that'll make it more waterproof and it'll make it stronger when we finally uh, assemble the whole thing. Sorry. So now it's time to just put it back together and uh, hopefully we can uh, line everything back up the way we had it. Yeah, like that. Best thing to do is just drill one all the way through. And we'll go right back into the hole it was in. Hey man, what's up? Not many. I haven't been out hardly. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been out fishing much. Why I'm trying to get this boat done. Oh, come on, really? It was much better aligned a little bit before, but that's gonna have to sit overnight, and that's not a perfect bond there but it'll be fine for what we want to do here Okay, well, actually, we need to separate these out because they'll stick together. They're not careful. There we go. So, yeah, that you know, a boat like this shouldn't take long, as long as it's taken me. But again, I've all the videos and stuff that takes me to do, plus the stuff I have to do for the business, it makes it very slow. So, that's something that should be taken into account when you're building a boat. Just how much time do you have to devote to it? Now, historically speaking, if you look at a lot of fly fishermen, a lot of people who do a lot of boat building, the, typically they're going to build their boats over the winter in a garage or somewhere inside where it's heated, protected from the, uh, the rain and the cold or the heat, whatever. And you have a lot more control over it. I mean, you could, in the truth be told, is uh, a boat like this, you could easily bang it out over the course of a weekend. That's the, the truth. If you know, of course, you got to allow time for the epoxies to cure and all that. That would that increases the build time. But if you just had like con, uh, construction glue stuff like that, you, you could easily bang out a boat like this in a weekend. But since I'm building this not from a set of plans, but from just up here, 
And if you're interested in the plans that are on my Teachable page, for those of you are interested, I've done a little bit of work, then I'll take a long break and think about what I'm doing before the next major step. Like right now, it took me a long time to figure out exactly how I was going to do support ribs because there comes a point where the boat has to transition from the angle here to a straight up angle here. And how do I make that transition where you know the, the wood is going to have to bend this way and twist a little? to what degree well we won't know that ultimately until you uh, assemble it but in making it simple fast and structurally sound I found that the best way to do it is just to reduce to four support ribs and that way you have a longer distance between the joints and things for the wood to bend around and stuff and we're using a fairly thin wood I forget exactly what it is I think it's quarter inch on the sides three eighths on the bottom and the whole thing's gonna be fiberglass epoxy have everything I need it's just uh, but once those support ribs that you just saw me uh, reinforce you were just adding a little bit of waterproofing between the joints and down in the screw so that the screws have something else to bite onto instead of just the screw and the wood um, so if the epoxy cracks and breaks the the screws are still holding if the screws snap the epoxy is still holding and then if all that still you still have the fiberglass holding it as well so it's going to be a strong strong boat but we don't need more than about four support ribs we're not going to use much more than about 10 maybe 12 horsepower just not going to use all that much power it's going to be a fairly low powered boat on purpose because fuel economy is a big part of it we're going to use the same motor that we have on our 12 footer but the boat's just simply stretched it's just we're taking a 12 foot John boat and essentially making it 16 feet long exactly the same it's not the same dimensions it's my dimensions up here just think of a 36 inch wide on the bottom but 16 foot long John boat it, by definition you can use less power and get the same performance out of it that's the whole point you'll still be able to haul a lot more gear I have be able to haul a lot more jugs I'll be able to haul, I'll be able to get the camera a little bit further back because uh, in the boat I need the camera to be about like this in order to get a little bit more of the background in and things like that. Whereas now I'm more like this and it's just not as, doesn't look quite right to me but that doesn't mean anything to most of you but it does mean something to me. And that'll give me a little bit more room in the boat to have all my jugs and stuff in front of me and coolers and stuff and the camera's kind of over there instead, it'll just be a lot easier maybe we can have somebody else on the show from time to time but for right now I definitely have some more fishing reels to, to work on see you. All right.